Hi YouTube, this is a project that I've wanted to do for a really long time and it was to sculpt the Ghoulies characters. Um, so if you haven't seen the movies, they're a bit like sort of gremlins or critters, that kind of uh, style. Um, creepy little characters and my kids have been away with their grandparents for a few days so I thought I'll get out the modelling materials and sculpt them. So if you're new to sculpting and you want to see how I've made these, um, keep watching and I'll show you all the stages through the builds. Okay, I quite often start with aluminium wire, twist it round itself and make like an internal kind of frame, like an armature. Um, but on this one, because I wanted to be really quick, I just started with aluminium foil and just squashed it all together just to get these rough kind of shapes. This is really, really quick to do and it gives you a sort of starting point straight away. So you can see here I did the four kind of main characters and then I remembered that there's a flying one as well. So I've ended up doing the flying one too. Um, right, and then after I made the aluminium rough shapes, I just got some milliput, which is like a two part putty. You just uh, mold the two parts together. And then this can be used to coat all of these aluminium frames. Okay, so if you look at this, this is with the milliput added. And it is literally just a very thin layer over the top and these are all hardened now so the milliput takes about four hours to um, set completely rock hard and these are really lightweight now because of obviously the aluminium foil inside and then just a very thin layer of milliput makes them really really kind of uh, lightweight you can see here this one sat down uh, the rest are standing up apart from the flying one which is this one so at this stage the shapes can be really really basic you can see here I've left a gap where the mouth is and I'm going to cut out um, the foil so that I can put his teeth in afterwards. And that is obviously really easy to do. Okay, and then after this, I sculpted the main um, shapes. I've left the arms off for now. I'm going to do the arms separately and I will use wire for that. Um, but you can see I've put quite a lot of detail now into the like the face and the torso of each of these um, and the rest of it is still kind of rough shapes. Um, for the teeth I used toothpicks um, just cut down with wire cutters. That's really quick to do because you can just literally make a thin sausage that's going to be the gums, press it up into the mouth and then you can just use like tweezers or something to um, put each tooth into the gum line and yeah very quick to do and these should look really good painted up and the toothpicks obviously they taper to a point so you can decide you know how long they want to be and things like that um, I think the flying ghoulie I'm going to have on a stand um, so he'll be kind of raised up and look like he's flying um, but you can see even on this one I've done a bit of detail to the torso and that sort of thing and at this point I was really pleased with how they were coming on Okay, then I took a drill and I just made holes through so that I could insert some twisted aluminium wire for making the arms. So it's really easy to drill the hole because you're just drilling through a thin layer of milliput and then obviously the really soft aluminium foil in the middle. So yeah, the hole's really quick to do and you definitely should twist the wire around itself because it just makes the wire a lot stronger and it just means when you put your very thin arms on it will make your arms even stronger and less likely to break in the future. You can see I've tried to get the lengths of the arms right even at this stage. Um, and then what I'm going to do is just add some more aluminium foil around the arms and then a very thin layer of milliput again over the top. So they ended up looking like this. You can see the arms are very basic at this stage. Um, I've added the feet as well and I've put them on wooden bases. This will give them much more kind of um, support in the future when they're stood up. They're not going to get knocked over as easily. And you can see, you know, a couple of these guys have got hooves. The first one had, you know, webbed feet. And then um, this one's got kind of thin toes. And then I've just got to make the hands next. And the flying one, I've ended up putting him on a skewer, which goes down into the base. And this should just make him look like he's flying. He spins around at the moment, but I think I will add some milliput just to kind of secure him in place near the end. Okay, this is what they look like with the hands added. 
Um, people often ask me, like, how do you decide how long you're going to spend on a sculpt? Um, with these particular guys, because I've, you know, I was doing five at the same time, um, I wanted them to look like the characters, obviously, but I didn't want to spend forever on them. I think if you ever want to do something and you're trying to make like an identical replica of the thing, you should probably make it life size and you should just spend as long as it takes to to do it basically. But with these guys, I just wanted to get an overall impression of them really. Um, and I was working really fast to try and get them done in the time while my kids were away. So I've only um, ended up working on them for a few days. Right, this is the first painting stage. So what I've done here is just put the base colours on. So you can see on this first one, just green and yellow. This one's got a base colour of grey. And then we've got just a brown base colour on this one. And this guy's green and brown. And you can see at this point, they look, you know, like a child has painted them, basically. This one's just got a grey first kind of coat as well. But you need to put on these kind of dark colours first and then you can dry brush the, all the lighter colours over the top like this. So the fish ghoulie, the first one, he's had some dry brushing of like a sort of pale turquoise colour over the top. Uh, and then you've got some detail added to the eyes and the gums. You can see I've added some red to his nose, that sort of thing. On the rat ghoulie, He's got flesh colours dry brushed over the top and again detail of the red gums and that sort of thing. The cat ghoulie, he's got again flesh colours added over the top. This is the toad ghoulie. Um, he's a bit more because he's two toned. He's had quite a few different colours dry brushed over. And then this bat ghoulie has got um, much paler greys added and again like light kind of washes of pink and things added and green as well added to this. It's subtle but um, in real life it looks better. So hopefully this gives you an idea of um, how it kind of really brings out the detail. So any of the kind of marks that you pressed in at the sculpting stage really start to show up after you dry brush. Right at the finishing touch stage I added a wash of green paint. So really watered down green over the top on this one because he was just looking a little bit too blue before so that makes the fish ghoulie kind of really much more like the color of the one in the movie on the rat ghoulie here and the cat ghoulie i've added some fluff and that's just from a shaggy dog toy and i've just cut the bits off and added them on and you can actually stain the fur a little bit as well with some watered down paint on the toad ghoulie, I've added a few more glazes of colour. Again, just watered down paint, just to add hints of colour at the end. It's really nice to be able to do that. You know, you decide that your character is looking fairly realistic, but you want to make it more realistic. Just add little washes, little hints of colour over at the end. Um, these have also got a coating of PVA glue on them to make them look shiny and a little bit more sort of grotesque more like the ones in the movies. Um, right, I'll do you some close-ups here so you can see just how kind of grotesque they are. Um, this one looks particularly <laughs> scary, his face when he's looking at you like that. Okay, and then um, as I move down, you can see here where the dry brushing picks out the sort of the highlight areas. And uh, you can see I've added like a fin on the back of this one. So he looks much more you know, like fish-like, like a sort of little merman kind of character. Um, here's the rat ghoulie with his kind of fluff on his back. You can see some of the fluff here I've stained with some um, watered-down yellow ochre sort of colour uh, and a tiny bit of grey as well. I was really pleased with how the kind of teeth look on this one and all the kind of wrinkles and things uh, on his sort of chest area. Okay, and then the cat ghoulie. Same sort of thing, the fluff makes all the difference, I think. It just really makes them look a lot more like the characters in the movies. Just adds that extra level of detail. So you can see like all the sort of ribs and the kind of chest area on this one. I didn't add as much detail as I'd have probably liked on the hands and the feet, but I don't think it matters because overall, you know, as a group of five, on my shelf they're going to look really nice I think and I can't wait to show my kids them when they get back from their holiday with their grandparents 
Um, okay, on the toad ghoulie, I just added a few more hints of colour. This is what's really nice. At these kind of end stages, you can just really, really water down your paint. And just add little tiny subtle hints of different colours just over the top right at the end, like little glazers. Um, on the back ghoulie here, I just painted the skewer black and the little sort of knobbly bit at the base. And I think that will just hide you know, the stick a little bit more when it's down in the studio and it'll make the little uh, flying bat look like he's flying more. Um, okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope it's inspired you all to go out and make your own um, little figures of anything really. Could be creatures from movies, um, things that you've made up yourself, anything, an animal. Um, but I really recommend that technique where you take some aluminium foil and just, you know, even without having to do a kind of wire armature first, just kind of squash the shape together in aluminium and then just go over it with some milliput. Um, thanks for watching. Hit subscribe to see more videos that I make in the future. And I'll catch you in the next video.